This is another lecture in the series of working with Scribus. In this lecture, we're going to discuss working with styles. If you go to the edit menu and then click on styles, or as you can see, you can also use F3, the style manager will open. And you'll note that we have three different kinds of styles in Scribus. We have paragraph styles, we have character styles, and we have line styles. We're going to discuss line styles separately when we talk about working with lines. So for now, we're just going to focus on paragraph styles and character styles, both of which are connected to text. So they would be used within a text frame. Now you might be asking why would I use styles? If you're familiar with Microsoft Word, then you already know that Microsoft Word has the same concept of styles. We might it, it, in particular want to use styles if we were working on a document where we have a say headings and a body and we want all of our headings to be in one style and the body or text to be in a different style we could set up a style sh sheet so that that work is automatically done for us now unlike Microsoft Word Microsoft Word has styles that are predefined styles whereas what you saw in the previous lecture when I was talking about frames the style manager in Scribus only has one default style so what we're going to do in this lecture is we're going to create a couple of different styles so that you can see how that function operates okay let's imagine that we're working on a newsletter and we have a uh, we want to create a style for headings and we want to create a separate style for for the body of the text so we click on paragraph styles and you can see as I said before we have only one style here which is the default so we want to create a new one so we click on new new paragraph style and you'll see it gives it an automatic name new style now you notice that the property box opened and if you look you see that there are some settings that are already determined with regard to a spacing and tabulation and information like that but there's nothing that is talking about the actual font now under line, underneath the line spacing you'll notice two boxes two spin boxes here that are used to determine how much white space comes before a paragraph indicated by this up arrow or after a paragraph it, with this down arrow. This uh, increasing the point here will cause more white space to appear before a paragraph or between the paragraph and the following paragraph. Now this is very similar to what we know in Microsoft Word if the before and after spacing. And then under the tabulator and indentation information we see here spin boxes that control the first line indent, the left indent, and the right indent. Now another feature you can see here are drop caps. Drop caps are large capital letters that you may have seen in magazines used sometimes that span two lines or more and begin the sentence with the la a large capital letter. So here if you were to click on drop caps, the default is two lines but you can increase it to more than that and the distance from text is the amount of space between the capital letter and the first word on the line on line one and you can increase that to be greater than zero if you want as well so to show you how this works let's create a style in which we have two points above and two points below paragraph and we also have and then we also want to have a left or first sorry first line 
indent a half an inch. So let's do manually 0.5. All right. And we also want to use drop caps for two lines. And let's put one half an inch. No, let's do one third of an inch before between the drop cap and the uh, first word. All right, we can change the name of this to paragraph indent with drop cap. And then I hit enter and we have a style. Paragraph indent with drop cap. Oops, I forgot to hit the apply button. So hit the apply button and then your style will be saved. Okay, now let's see how applying the style works. I have here some text that I've imported and I want to apply my style to it. So I click on the frame and, or I could highlight the text too, but let's just click on the frame and then we will um, go to properties and we'll click on text and then you see style settings. We click on style settings and then we select the style we want, which is indent paragraph with drop caps. And you can then see that the style has been applied to the text that we have here. Now, what happens if I don't like this? I think there's too much space here. Um, so I want to change that. Well, we can go back to edit styles and this edit button here we can click on the style we want to edit click edit now let's say I want to change this to only be um, one tenth of an inch and if you remember from our uh, working with frames lecture I can in, in the spin wheel I can click on the shift button and spin the wheel and the tenths digits will change. So I've reduced it to one. And that's the only other change I want to make now. So I can go down and hit apply. And the nice thing you'll see is that the style automatically updates. So everywhere I was using this style would in this document would automatically update. Alright, I click done and I'm done with that particular edit. Now you said, but wait a minute, we talked about using headings and body of text having different fonts. So how do we do that? Well, we need to create a character style. So we go to edit, we go to styles, and instead of paragraph style on new, we click character style. And I'm going to name this body and Let's get away from Arial. Uh, I like a serif font for the body of the text, so I'm going to select Times New Roman, and I'll leave it at 12 point, and I don't need to ha change anything else here. Black ink is fine. I don't need any special attributes. So I just click on Apply, and then Done. All right, now I want to create another one, so I click on New, and then this is going to be, let's say, Heading 1. So I want my heading to be in a sans serif font, so I'm going to, let's do something besides Arial. So I'm going to pick Tahoma. I do want it to be bolded, so I'm going to change that to bold. And I'm going to make it larger. It's going to be 14 points. And let's say I want to use small caps. And just, I'm not saying this is a good design decision, but 
just experiment and show you th some differences here. I'm going to use a blue font, a blue color instead of black for the heading font. All right, so I'm all done with that. I click apply. I click done. And now you see I have a heading one character uh, style. All right, now that I've created some character styles, let's apply them. So I click on the frame that I want to have the character style apply to. And then I right click, sorry, click, right click to properties. Then the properties window is open. I click on text. Then I click on style settings. In my case, it's already open. So for the character style, I want to click on body. And then you see now my text is changed based on what I specified for the characters. This is now in times Roman font size 12. All right, now let's say, talk about the heading. One of the best ways, I think, to do headings in, a, in Scribus is to create separate frames for the headings. So what we want to do is go back, we want to insert text frame, and let's just put a heading up here at the top. All right, this is one of the cases where you might want to use direct editing, so I just double click and I type in the text I want, the various types of audiences in business communication. Alright, now I just, sorry, I click on the frame to highlight it, I go to text, and I choose a character style. In this case I'm going to choose heading one, and then you see I now get the style that we built for headings, heading ones. Notice that I do not have any paragraph style here. There's no style. Um, I've chosen to just use the default because I have no style paragraphing uh, requirements for my heading. But if I did, if I wanted to, for example, um, change the spacing or uh, anything that would ma be manipulated like we saw here in the paragraph uh, style, I could create a separate paragraph style called heading one and then we'd be able to apply both the paragraph style and the character style. But you can see that they do operate, they can operate separately if you so wish. All right, that's about it for styles. The only other thing to show you the final thing I want to show you is how to import a style or styles from an existing Scribus document. So let's create a brand new Scribus document. Then we go under Edit, Styles, and you'll notice that I have no styles in this document, The uh, just the defaults. So I click on Import. And then I navigate to the place where I've got my file saved that I know has styles that I want to import. And I click on that. And I click on OK. And I can choose, default is to select all. I can choose which ones I want to import. I can rename them if I want to. Or if I have existing styles, I can replace them. In this case, I have no existing styles and I have no reason to rename them, so I just click on OK. And now those styles that we just created are now imported into this new document. So one of the things that you might want to consider when you're working with styles is to create a master, uh, a master copy, which we're going to talk about next week, in which you define all of your styles and you just use that to uh, create a document or you create a document that has specific styles in it and then you just always import from that document. So those are one ways of not having to rebuild your style for every single Scribus document. And that wraps up our discussion of styles.